Samantha. She's 28 and used to work as a glamour model. But 10 years ago, she discovered the sugar world, a sort of Disney playground for adults where wealthy men shell out thousands of pounds to turn a pretty girl into a princess. I like dating rich guys. I don't like dating people that earn less than me. Um, I like to know more earth. Over the years, I've got everything that I've basically wanted to make my life how it is now. I've got my home. Um, Your house? My flat, yeah. This flat has I was, been paid? Yeah, I was brought the flat and um, the deposit was paid for. I've had um, a car brought for me. I've had watches, you know, expensive shoes, Louis Vuittons. Samantha says she's only slept with one of her sugar daddies. The gifts are all given in the spirit of altruism. Sounds too good to be true? Take a look at some of the sugar website advertisements and you get a hint of what's expected back. Attending college means you have the choice. Take out loans and eat ramen. Or get a sugar daddy and live the life you've always wanted. I like dating beautiful women. Sugar Daddy Mike works abroad a lot and says he doesn't have time to join the quest for love. So he's opted for a shortcut, a no-strings-attached sugar arrangement. Obviously, uh, with an arrangement, uh, you, uh, I provide a monthly, monthly allowance uh, plus uh, shopping trips. Monthly uh, allowance being? Uh, for my current sugar baby, £2,000 a month, um, plus uh, shopping trips, um, if she so wishes. And what does she give in return? What do you expect in return? Um, I look for um, companionship. Um, loyalty, uh, friendship, um, and yes, intimacy is part of that. Sex? Yeah, if it's with the right person. But at the same time, you know, both of you have to have a connection. Um, but let's be honest, you wouldn't continue an arrangement if the girl didn't agree to have sex. You wouldn't be in a long-term arrangement. I wouldn't be in a long-term relation, traditional relationship if I wasn't being physical with that person. It's exactly the same principle. The trend began, of course, in the US. The Americans call it mutually beneficial dating. Transactional arrangements where both parties get exactly what they want. The head of PR of one US site claims to have 4 million members worldwide, with 240,000 sugar babies and 20,000 sugar daddies now registered in Britain. When they go on their first date, whereas you and I would talk about our interests and hobbies, they would actually talk about their terms and what they expect out of the relationship. If two people can see eye to eye and agree to what the other person is expecting, then they enter into an arrangement. Otherwise, they keep looking. But if the sugar daddy's giving all this money, all these goods to some luxury goods, luxury trips, he wants something in return, doesn't he? He expects sex. I wouldn't say that sex is expected. I would certainly say that it's aspired to, just like in any other relationship. It is really high-class prostitution, isn't it? It is a conduit for sex. No matter what country you access us in, we don't allow that type of behavior on the website. In fact, any solicitation in exchange for money, uh, any service in exchange for money is strictly prohibited. Angela's website targets debt-ridden college students. And in Britain, university undergraduates make up the largest number of new recruits. I got into it through a friend in second year. 22-year-old Freya, who's asked us to keep her identity secret, graduated from a top university last year, debt-free. Exhausted by poorly paid bar work, she signed up as a sugar baby. It was, she says, a financial no-brainer. I had two sugar daddies. Uh, one was married and one was divorced. Uh, one would pay me a monthly allowance, the other would pay me cash in hand. And I sort of got paid depending on how many times we'd meet. How much did they pay you? Between 1000 and 2000 either a night or a month. And did you know from the start that sex would be involved? Uh, yes. And Freya's mum, Mary, knew exactly what her daughter was up to. I think that all children are born with certain assets. One of her assets is that she is beautiful and has sexual allure, and I think that gives her erotic capital. And, and why shouldn't she use it, just like just like other people make use of other assets. It's, um, it's just a supplement to getting on in life and, and people value beauty. Isn't this just prostitution? Oh, for sure. 
we need to deal with it, take it at face value, and really swallow it up. This is prostitution, but it's an upper-class, middle-class manifestation of it, and so it's allowed to slip through the law enforcement because there is demand for high-class escorts. Love it or hate it, in our time-starved, luxury-hungry society, sugar dating is on the rise. And every week, more British students looking for a quick fix for their soaring debts are signing up. So would you recommend sugar dating to other students? To someone who might not be psychologically prepared for something like this, then it will be... they won't be ready for it, for sure. But if you're a girl that's sexually active, sexually inquisitive, sexually open, and you have your head screwed onto your shoulders, it's an absolute goldmine.